we considered monotone convergence theorem that says that important theorem, there are not so many theorems that have personal abbreviature. Weierstrass theorem, mean value theorem, Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem, this also. Monotone convergence theorem says that if <coughs> functions are, we have increasing function, sequence of functions, we suppose that they are measurable and non-negative, then we will have that integral fn also converge to integral f, Lebesgue integral. Maybe infinite, maybe infinite. So this is the theorem. Now, and I gave you some corollaries for the series, and that uh, another corollaries, corollary says that uh, from here we have that if function is non negative measurable, then we can introduce some new uh, measure with, given, with respect to given measure mu, it's measurable. And this new measure mu can be defined in this way. Okay, so sigma additivity can be proved by using this mean mm, monotone convergence theorem. Now let's look at some applications of this theorem. Uh, we consider it with you somehow when we learn the bounded functions, a set of finite measure that if function f maps from the internal bounded internal in a b and function also is bounded, then we have that. And if it's Riemann integrable, if it's Riemann integrable, then we will have, so it is Riemann integrable, I denote in this way, then we will have that Lebesgue integral exists, and Lebesgue integral of this function dm with respect to Lebesgue measure on the line, uh, it is just Riemann integral, Riemann integral from a to b f dx, okay? But indeed, it, it's, it, it's also true for improper integrals, for improper integrals, if uh, we consider infinite interval or maybe infinite value of the function, if function uh, preserves the sign, if it is everywhere is positive or everywhere is negative, or maybe everywhere except some finite intervals. It's for, this fin for this finite interval, we have the Riemann and Lebesgue integrals are the same, and then <coughs> we can use a deviate. So what I want to say, I want to say the following, it's a kind of application or maybe example of application of mean, uh, monotone convergence theorem. Uh, suppose that function is non-negative on the line, or let, let's consider half of line, half of line, and we suppose uh, that there exists, such that there exists integral uh, from zero to infinity, improper Riemann integral, f dx. So let's denote this integral by i. <coughs> so we can't use this theorem. This is it works only for proper proper Riemann integral. Then in this situation also we have then we will have in this situation that there exists Lebesgue integral on the R plus of F D M with the Lebesgue measure, and this Lebesgue integral has the same value, has the same value i. It's possible to prove this fact in different way. The simplest, in my opinion, is just by uh, monotone convergence theorem. Uh, so we need, we want, we will introduce some sequence of functions. We can take function fn <coughs> as a uh, f multiply, f multiply by characteristic function in this situation to of the integral zero n. And then what do we have? Then, then we have that fn a convergence point wisely, and what is more increasingly, it's convergence increasingly to function f, okay? So, clearly. Now, but for this, of course, uh, here we suppose that there is singularity only at infinity, yeah? So we suppose that function is bounded here. So it is just a proper <coughs> integral, sometimes it's called of the first type. So, uh, here we suppose that function is bounded. Now, if function is bounded, then we can apply this theorem, this theorem for the integral zero n. Then we have, then we have that interval uh, zero, or maybe interval immediately r plus, and here f n d m, because it is the integral on finite interval, uh, integral for finite interval from bounded function by the theorem. It is the same as Riemann integral. It is the same as Riemann integral zero n f dx. But it has a limit by definition of improper integral. It has the limit i. 
It has the limit i, okay? Therefore, what do we have? We have monotone convergence theorem, monotone con convergence theorem Fn uh, convergence increasing b to f. It implies that integral of f exists and it has the same limit, or this, the same limit value i, since it is just the limit of the sequence. Okay, simple proof. Indeed, in, in one line, if we use monotone convergence theorem. Of course, the same can be done uh, for improper integral of the type uh, a, b, a function f dx, Riemann, Riemann improper integral. If function has only one singularity, for example, f of uh, a plus zero is infinity or minus in, plus infinity in this situation. Of course, in the same way, we can approximate it again if function is not negative. We can approximate this function by uh, functions such that we, uh, we can apply this argument to, to these functions. Is it clear? Yeah? Of course, it's clear. Now, but I'd like to recall you that not all, in just we discussed this with you in the first lecture, yeah? Or maybe in the second, that not all improper Riemann integral exists as a Lebesgue integral. So this, it, it works if function has the same sign, everywhere positive or everywhere negative, except maybe some interval, finite interval. But in general not, uh, let's write this explicitly. In general not, not it means that there are improper Riemann integrals, which, such that the corresponding Lebesgue integral does not exist. But we, we will introduce general Lebesgue integral just today, so uh, maybe we can <coughs> postpone this discussion for 15 minutes. Uh, but indeed, since we did it in the first lecture, I will recall you that there are rather important uh, in applications fre Fresnel, Fresnel integrals. In integrals. Indeed, these integrals, uh, they are functions with variable upper limit. Uh, if they consider it in the following way. As x, it is integral from 0 to x, and here sine t squared dt. And uh, cs, it is the same for cosine. Yeah. For x, cosine t squared uh, dt, of course. Ah, cosine t squared, yeah. Now, of course, this function, they are not positive. They are still less, you see. And, uh, but it's possible to show that Riemann, improper Riemann integral exists. And what is more, it's possible to calculate in, explicitly, explicitly that this integral, the limit, the limit of this function at infinity, integral of sine t squared dt uh, from zero to infinity, improper Riemann integral as a limit of this function as x goes to infinity. It is the same as improper integral of cosine t squared dt and they are equal, I'm not sure, I will look now. It seems to me pi squared, it is uh, square root of pi over eight. Yeah, it's true. Okay, so, <clears throat> but as we will see with you very soon, the, the uh, Lebesgue integral does not exist. But Lebesgue integral for, for sine t squared, cosine t squared uh, does not exist does not exist, okay? Does not exist. Okay, so interval is finite, compact, and the function is bounded that any Riemann integral is Lebesgue integral. So Lebesgue integral, generalization of Riemann integral. And the same we can say for improper Riemann integrals, if the function is positive or negative. But it's not true if we consider function that alternates sign. Okay, this is clearly. Now, as I say at the beginning, that there is another important fact, another important theorem about passage to the limit, uh, so-called Fatou lemma. And uh, uh, it's interesting to check historically. It seems to me that firstly Fatou did it, and then Biapalevi proved the more general result, but uh, it, it's possible to prove firstly for two lemma. But we will follow the way that we will use monotone convergence theorem. Monotone convergence theorem to prove this for two lemma. For two lemma, another important, useful fact. Uh, because of importance, indeed, this is theory, yeah? But uh, historically, traditionally, this result is called lemma. Uh, for two lemma, also can be applied this result for functions of the same sign. 
Indeed, there is some gen generalized form, but it's almost the same as we will see now with you. So now we have, suppose, that all functions, all functions in the sequence, we, there, there is a sequence of measurable functions, uh, and uh, they are non-negative. They are non-negative. Now, uh, without discussion whether or not the corresponding integral exists, we have immediately that integral of limit. Of course, it's not convergent in general. We have nothing about this functions, only measurability and positivity. This is importance of photolemma. It can be applied for any sequence of the same sign, if function they have the same sign. No, no, absolutely no type of convergence. There is no, conver there is no limit, but always, of course, there exists lower upper limit. And here we have integral d mu. It, it works for any measure. It works for any measure. This is less or equal than a lower limit of integral of fn d mu. Also, <coughs> uh, in principle, uh, this integral always exists, yeah? This integral always exists. Maybe they can take infinite value. If take infinite value, I mean... Uh, uh, are these Riemann integrable? Yeah, these are Riemann integrable. This, uh, I, I won't say that, repeat, uh, for newcomers. That this is improper Riemann integral as a limit. So this is just the limit. It is, by definition, limit x goes to infinity, s x, or if you want, uh, c x, okay? Fresnel integral. Uh, useful, it's, uh, it's not from our course. Uh, why this is pi over a? There are some methods to evaluate, to find this. To find this in complex analysis, there are some in other tricks. It's possible to show that this, uh, this concrete value, but they exist as in proper Riemann integral. But they, they, they do not as Lebesgue integral. We will see now, since we are, we are not ready to discuss now with you, uh, what is Lebesgue integral for general function. In, in principle, I say you in the first lecture that uh, what is the one of the disadvantages or sh shortages of Lebesgue integral. The big problem that if function is, integra if function is integrable, uh, it is even not, it's not a problem, it is the, uh, a matter of definition. Its integral is defined in such a way that function is integrable in Lebesgue sense if and only if Modulus of function is integrable, but modulus of that function is not integrable. Useful exercise, useful exercise to draw this uh, picture, to, draw, to, to show this explicitly. It's possible to show that integral of modulus of sine t squared uh, dt is infinity, is infinity. So if you take this integral, it is a kind of alternation, alternation. It is the same as series minus 1 over n, n plus 1. It's convergent, here. Yeah? from 1 to infinity, it's a very good value, logarithm of 2. But if you take models, then not. Okay? So the same effect, the same effect. Now, let us return to this photolemma. So, <laughs> the fact is rather general. Let's prove it. Uh, proof. Uh, we will, given sequence, given sequence, we will take the function g k. GK, by definition, it is infimum of Fn, but infimum for N more or equal than K. Uh, 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 this is well-defined measurable function. Since we understand, we remember with you that taking supremum, infimum for any family of measurable functions, for any countable family of measurable functions, again, is measurable. For uncountable, maybe not. Okay, so this is the function. Then, what, what can we say about this function? This is measurable, yeah? And... Uh, it's important for us that GK uh, is monotone. We are going to use <coughs> monotone convergence theorem to this sequence, yeah? Uh, of course, it's monotone, yeah? If we enlarge K, enlarge K, then we will decrease the set where we take infimum. So, of course, infimum will be larger, yeah? So, this is increasing, clearly, yeah? But it's more important now, also it's very important, that it uh, increases to limit, to this lower limit. What's more? Limit does not exist in general for the sequence, but lower limit exists always. Exists always. Uh, why? This is definition, one of the definition. So what is, I'd like to recall you, what is the uh, lower limit of for sequence of functions, uh, for sequence of numbers? It is supremum. Supremum for k and infimum for n, more or equal than k, and here we have a n. So this is just definition, yeah? 
clearly. If not, then I recommend you to draw the picture, then you will understand it is indeed just the low limit. So we have the situation. Now, uh, what can we say about uh, this function gk? We see that, of course, this gk, by definition, less or equal than fn, and this is for any n, of course, more or less equal than k, since it's infimum, in infimum. So, from here, <laughs> since the integral is monotone, function is smaller than integral, <laughs> is smaller, we have that integral of gk with respect to this measure, less or equal than integral of fn, and the gain for any n, more or equal than k. And now, k is fixed, k is fixed. And here, now, on the right, we can do everything in the sense of we can take supremum infimum, of course, under this condition. Also, we can take here lower limit, lower limit. Since, the, for if in definition of lower limit, now it, it is important only large value of k. So from here, from here we have that integral of gk d mu less or equal than lower limit of integral fn d mu. So please your questions about this one. This is the important step. Yeah, since we have this for any n, for any n, particularly for limit, it is a lower limit. It is partial limit, limit for some subsequence. Limit for some subsequence. So particularly we have this for this sequence which will realize this lower limit. So of course we will have it. Now, <coughs> now monotone convergence theorem. We have that gk increases for some very concrete function fn. The for integral of gk converges to uh, integral of lower limit of fn d mu. I, I, okay, I will not write d mu. So, but uh, this is the bound, uniform bound from above. So this is some value, concrete value, maybe infinity, okay? So this very concrete value. And this very concrete value, it is the upper bound for all of them and the four for this as well. From here we have the result, okay? So is it clear? Please your questions about this last argument. We have this one at the beginning. Now, there is no key here. It is very some concrete value, maybe an extended uh, set of positive. Now, e since we have monotone convergence, we will use the monotone convergence theorem. So we have monotone convergence of integrals. This is some another value. And this another, oops, of course, this is lower limit. And this another limit, this, uh, this is another value, very concrete also value. In general, not equal, less or equal. As we will see with you, now we'll consider with you some simple examples to show that <coughs> in general we don't have here equality. Please, your questions about the proof of Fatulema. Once more, I want to, uh, once more I'd like to repeat that. What is the importance of this Fatulema? Why should, we, you, why should you know this Fatulema? There is a Lebeck dominated convergence theory that we'll prove with you very soon. There is monotone convergence theorem. But Fatulema can be applied in this situation when there is no limit, okay? So uh, here in, in, in what follows in the big dynamic convergence theorem and what on convergence, we have some limit of function, of sequence of functions. Now let's look at some trivial examples. Uh, the first example, uh, let be, we will take characteristic function of nn plus one. For example, uh, it is characteristic function nn plus one. Uh, this is, it has a limit, pointwise limit, and the limit is zero. So lower limit is zero. Uh, here we have that this integral of lower limit of fn, of course, is zero since function is zero, but it is less not equal to one. And this one, it is a, a lower limit or limit if you, since limit exists, integral, so indeed we can remove here. So limit integral fn, since for all, for all functions, integral f1, if you can, if consider integration, of course, with respect to Lebesgue measure, with respect to Lebesgue measure. The second example, it's absolutely, the second example, it's the same. Uh, ah, not the same. Uh, uh, very trivial remark, very trivial remark. We have fn, it is integral 1 over n, and characteristic function of n to n. Let's consider this one. Uh, then, what do we have? 
we have the dysfunction not only convergent to zero point-wise, it's uniformly convergent to zero, but, but we have that integral of, of course, the uh, Fatulem again can be applied, and we have the same zero smaller than one, yeah? But I want to say that integral fn is not the same uh, as integral of f, which is zero, since this integral again is one, yeah? So, uniform convergence is not so useful here, I mean, for a set of, of infinite measure, if you consider some limits. So, it's another trivial example. Here, we cannot use uh, monotone convergence theorem, since there is no monotonicity. There is no monotonicity. Now, there exists extended version, uh, version of a tulema. This extended version of a tulema, the following, uh, maybe function not positive, but we suppose that fn more or equal than some function g, or maybe minus, let me put negative function g. Okay, for positive function g. Uh, but with important condition. With important condition such that this integral g is convergent, okay, on this set. On this set. So function g is positive. We suppose this function g here is positive, uh, no negative. And here we can a little, very little, release the condition. And then we will have the same, uh, of course, measurable. And then we have the same con conclusion that integral of lower limit less or equal than lower limit of integral. But it's nothing. It is the same as the uh, Fatou lemma, yeah? So what sh should we do? Of course, we have to consider Fn plus g. Now the functions are no negative. We apply Fatou lemma and uh, uh, cancel, cancel integral of g from both parts. Okay? So clearly. So it's not so, so big generalization, so big extension. Sometimes it, it's useful. Now, if no questions, then I'm ready to uh, consider with you important definition and then interesting proposition, so which is called absolute continuity of the integral. This chapter that we consider with you, considered with you last time and now, it's called Lebeck integral for um, positive function, for positive function. So now we will introduce with you, indeed I use this few times, several times, uh, uh, notation of integrable, set of integrable functions. So this is definition. We say that function, but it's, uh, we consider just positive, yeah? Positive function, measurable function is integrable, integrable on the set E, of course, measurable set E, and we will denote in this way Fe. If we have that integral F d mu with respect to measure mu, it is finite. So this integral we defined with you as a supremum. So I'd like to recall you, what is this integral by definition? By definition, this is supremum of integral, and here you can take bounded functions with support fine, with that measure, or immediately we can take simple functions here, d mu, yeah? For simple function, let's recall that f. So this supremum in general is maybe infinite, you see? If it's finite, the supremum, the function is integrable. Function is integrable. Now, uh, about these integrable functions, we have proposition number five. Proposition number five uh, says that, mm, proposition five, if we have two functions, if you have two functions and of that type, so if, of course, measurable, measurable, if we have that function, f, big function, large function, is uh, integrable, then we have that function g is integrable, okay? And, and what can we say? We have that integral of f minus g, it's positive, yeah? It is integral of f minus integral of g in this situation. We have it, okay? So, useful, simple, but useful remark that everything that is between zero and integrable function is also integrable on the condition, of course, measurability. Now, uh, indeed, indeed. So, simple remark, uh, what is the integral of f? Integral of f d mu. 
uh, since this f can be written as a su sum of two terms, yeah, it is integral of f minus g and plus g, yeah, and both terms are positive. Uh, both terms are positive, no negative. Both terms are no negative, but we have a dictivity. Indeed, I did not prove, but I said that you, I recommended you to check since it's trivial, yeah? To check a dictivity of integrals of that type. So this is integral of f minus g plus integral of g. And now look, if, of course, this stuff, all this stuff is non-negative. Therefore, if this is finite, if this is finite, uh, here, this integral of f finite, if and only if these both integrals are finite, integral f minus g is finite, and integral g is finite trivially, yeah? And therefore, from here, we have immediately this decomposition, since one finite number is sum of not to, to other finite numbers. Okay, this is simple fact, but useful. Now, questions. The next proposition, number six. This is proposition, but the result is indeed more important than this trivial remark. Uh, since uh, for many situations it's useful to solve some concrete problems, uh, to understand the nature of Lebesgue integral, it is so-called absolute continuity. Uh, absolute continuity of Lebesgue integral. Very soon, maybe in one week, uh, we will, maybe in two weeks, we will consider with you absolute continuous functions. Absolute continuous functions. So, I don't want to give a definition now, it's, but then we, 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 when we will consider absolute continuity functions, we will return to this fact in order to see that indeed it is absolute continuity. Absolute continuous Lebesgue integrals, uh, the following fact. Suppose that function is integrable on set E, on set E, of finite measure, infinite measure, not so important, but integral of f is finite. Then what do we have? We have that for any epsilon there exists delta such that uh, for any a inside of E such that uh, measure, for any measure, not only for Lebesgue, measure a uh, is smaller than delta, it follows that integral of f d mu is smaller than epsilon over the set a, over the set a. So this is a function, this is a function of a set, yeah? Since function f is fixed, function f is fixed. So this is some lambda a. So indeed, this is absolute continuity of this lambda in the sense that if a is small, measure is smaller than delta, then lambda is small. And what is important here that a can be of any nature, but of course measurable, of any nature. So it's not interval, but not, not borrow any, any set, any set with this. So for many situations, this fact is useful is useful. Let's prove it. Let's prove it. Proof. Uh, proof. This theorem, of course, is absolutely trivial if function is bounded. Yeah. Uh, so mm, uh, wait a minute. Indeed, I uh, we we consider it. Let's write here models. Yeah. So let's suppose, let's it, it can be done for more general case, but since we consider this stuff for, for non-negative functions, so I'll write also this non-negative, but we will see that uh, we can do the same for any function if you take the modulus. Since if function, we will see with you if function is integrable, and modulus is integrable. So this, inter this fact is very simple if you have that function is bounded, yeah, because we have estimation. If function is smaller than m, less or equal than integral over a f d mu is less or equal than this m and measure of a. So this is delta, so of course it can be very easy to, to make it smaller than epsilon, yeah? But the, the proof is <coughs> rather deductic, deductive here, uh, useful method in this course, in this subject. If we have something for good enough functions and we want to prove for some more general class, then uh, this is the importance of this theorem, space to the limit. If you have something for one class, then 
and element of other class more general can be approximated by elements from the previous class, then the prove and use passage to the limit. So this is very... If you unbound it, for example, I don't know, but if it's uh -huh. L E implies the integral is... Finite. finite but function is unbounded in general, maybe. What did we consider with you at the beginning of the lecture today? That there are functions which are not non-bounded. Look, let's look. Let's look at this example. So, we prove this theorem for bounded functions. But then I say that using monotone convergence theorem, we can generalize this for improper integrals, not for all improper integrals, but for improper integrals of positive fun for positive functions. Let's take function dx over square root of x from 0 to 1. This is Riemann integral. This is Riemann integral, if, if we use this notation. And this Riemann integral, so this all machinery for calculation of Riemann integrals, they can be used now for Lebesgue integrals in this situations like this, situations like this. So we can calculate this integral, and you will have number two, yeah? It's clear, since it's two square root, etc. Now, so we have improper integral exist, improper integral exist. Now, then from here, by monotone convergence theorem, it follows that Lebesgue, Lebesgue integral of this function on the, maybe it's better to write open interval, since otherwise we have to define function on point zero. And here we have Lebesgue measure and square root of x also is two. Why? Why? Just by monotone convergence theorem, take function fn. Function fn, it is our function, of course function here, one over square root of x, one over square root of x, multiplied by characteristic function of the interval one over n one, okay? For this bounded function, we have this result, that it is Riemann and Lebesgue integrals are the same. Now, what do we have? We have that function in, uh, converges and monotonically. Here we use positivity. Why can't we apply the same arguments for Fresnel integral? Since for Fresnel integral, monotone convergence theorem does not work since we don't have monotonicity. Yes, Lebesgue dominated convergence theorem does not work since there is no dominating function is not integrable. Okay, so this is the problem. But for positive function, we have that it converges to F. Yeah, now we have that Lebesgue integral, Lebesgue integral, uh, but this Lebesgue integral over the whole interval, of course, we integrate over the whole interval. Fn, uh, it is just the same as Riemann integral from one over n to one, it has the limit two, and on one, on one hand, since Riemann integral has the limit two, on the other hand, this by monotone convergence theorem, here we use monotone convergence theorem, it has the limit of f, f d mu, yes? But limit is unique, we live in house door space. If sequence has a limit, that limit is unique. So we have here that uh, this function, okay? Non-bounded, understand, nice. So, in general, of course, it's not bounded. Since bounded, it's not interesting once more. It's immediately we have, we save, <laughs> we, we take delta equals epsilon over this bound, and then we will have trivially the result. Now, so function is not bounded, but once more. If in this situation, but if you have this for bounded functions, so let's approximate our function by bounded functions. So this is some general idea, general trick. To prove something, try to prove for some class which functions which are more or less good, and then generalize it using passage to the limit, theorems of passage to the limit. This is illustration of importance. Now look, uh, so what we'll take? We will take function fn, fn will be fn of x. fn of x, it will be f of x, if x, if f of x less or equal than n, and n if f larger than n. So it is some cut function. And for this cut function, this cut function is bounded clearly. Then uh, what is also clearly for us, that this function is monotone. Yeah? And not only the limit is f, of course, clearly, yeah? Since if for some point this is smaller than n, that it is, will be just stable, fixed sequence, you see? But if it's infinity, then eventually we will uh, reach this infinity. Okay, so it's clear. Now, therefore, what do we have? We have monotone convergence theorem. Monotone convergence theorem, we have that integral fn minus integral of f, uh, and here it's important, convergence. Uh, so, of course, it's convergent to here, yeah? 
And in general, if it's not, in, it's infinity. So it also goes to infinity, and that's all. But now this integral is finite. Now this integral is finite. The, it means that if one sequence, some sequence approaches in a monotone way, uh, maybe it's better to write immediately in this way, uh, this some finite value, now for any epsilon, we can choose very concrete number n, such that the difference of these integrals, we have that integral of f minus integral fn, no need to write modulus since this, some, this is something positive. It is smaller than epsilon, uh, smaller than epsilon over 2, smaller than epsilon for any n larger than n capital, for any n larger than n capital, okay? By this convergence, by this convergence. Now, more or equal, more or equal. Now, what can we do? Uh, well, we have, we have, then we can take, we can take um, delta equals, let's take epsilon over 2, e e epsilon over 2n, epsilon over 2n, we will see now, is it, okay, maybe it's better to take, then, then what do we have? Then, we want to prove this stuff, yeah? We want to prove this stuff. We have that integral of f d mu for any a. For any a such that measure of a is smaller than delta. We consider integral over a, d mu. It is integral of f minus fn plus integral of fn. Since this, they are positive, and the integral is additive, we proved for positive, at least for positive functions. Of course, we integrate with respect to a, with respect to a. Clearly, yeah? Now, less or equal, indeed strictly less, strictly less. The first one, the first one, it is, of course, smaller than integral over the whole E, F minus Fn. Uh, why? Because it is positive function, no negative function, no negative function. And uh, the second is the same, the second is the same, but... Uh, for the second, for second, we have here the bound of the function. Now this function fn, of course, is bounded by n, less or equal. And the measure of the set, mu a, mu a, which is smaller than delta of that type. This is smaller than epsilon over 2. This is smaller than epsilon over 2. This is smaller than epsilon. This is absolute continuity of Lebesgue integral, of Lebesgue integral. V consider good function, bounded function. For bounded function, we have condition, and we understand how to choose delta for bounded function. Then, since we can approximate our function by bounded in this monotone way, we will do this, choose a large enough n, etc. Questions? Useful fact. Definitely you will uh, use it, you will meet it a pair of times when we will solve problems that I will give you in the homework, maybe in the midterm. Now, please, your questions about <coughs> this one. I'm going to consider with you, uh, we do not consider some concrete problems. I'm going to do this with you today. But maybe now it's better to, to finish this subject and to uh, consider the general Lebesgue integral. Since everything is ready now, after all this preparation, to introduce 5.3, the general Lebesgue integral. Yeah, sure. Also for huh? negative functions. Yeah, we just will do this now. The general Lebesgue integral. The general Lebesgue integral. So, we understand now what is the integral for bounded function, yes? What is the integral for positive function? Maybe it can take infinite value. Now, for general function. For general function, there is very natural idea. For any function f, measurable or non-measurable, we can introduce two, two positive functions. So any function is, can be decomposed, can be represented as a difference of two positive functions in very natural way. f plus can be defined as a maximum f0, of course, for any concrete x, yes? And f minus, it is, a, by definition, it is maximum of minus f0. So then what do we see from here? We have from here that both functions are non-negative. Both functions are non-negative. We have that function f, it is f plus minus f minus. And what is modulus of f? Modulus of f, of course, it is f plus plus f minus, yeah? Plus f minus. 
for very for concrete value x, for concrete value x, this may be f of x, maybe minus f of x. If it is f of x positive, if f of x is positive, it is f plus, and this is zero. Otherwise, it's clearly yeah. So of course, I hope you made this before. Uh, what do we take? We take this as f plus. Uh, this is f plus, and this is f uh, minus. This is minus, minus f minus. Okay. Now this is definition, and we are, we will define now the integral. So this is definition, definition, important definition. Uh, so we will say that f is integrable with respect to some measure over some set E if we have if we have that um, both integrals are finite. If both integrals are finite, integral f plus is finite, integral f minus is finite, okay? Over set E. Integral f minus d mu, d mu is finite. So this is definition. So this is definition. Both are finite. If both are finite, this is, we continue the definition. Then we say that integral f d mu by definition over the set E, it is integral of f plus d mu minus integral of f minus d mu over the set E. This is now well defined. This is now well defined. Since indeed the main problem here, what is prohibited absolutely, uh, in theory of measure of integral, we understand what is zero multiplied by infinity multiplied by zero, understand what is zero plus infinity plus infinity, what is one divided by infinity, but, uh, but infinity minus infinity is not defined here. We, can, we, can, we don't understand what is this, and we will return to this when we will define with you signed measure, for example. And here in particular, this is well defined since both values are finite. Both values are finite. And from here, this is definition immediately, we see that function is integrable if and only if, I don't write this LE with respect to some measure, uh, if and only if modulus of function is integrable. Okay? Hmm? By infinity times zero is zero. By definition. But each one over each one over No, 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 wait a minute. It's not a calculus. It's not a calculus. Since, uh, we, in calculus, we, uh, what does it mean? It's not infinity in calculus. It is expression of the type infinity. So indeed, it's f multiplied by g. f goes to infinity, g multiplies by zero, and limit may be any, maybe infinity, maybe finite number, maybe zero, if, if, if you want. It's in calculus. But here we consider as the actual, not potential, but actual infinity. It is just infinity as a value of extended real. Or extended positive real, okay? Two times zero. Huh? Like two times zero. Why two times? Two times zero is zero. This is the same. No, like no, 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 no. It is definition. It is definition. So it is definition. What? How do we use the definition? That integral over the set E of function g mu is zero for any function measurable. Since for non-measurable, we don't know, understand what is the integral. If we have that measure of E is zero. Uh, so uh, indeed it follows from by definition. It follows by definition. So this may be explanation. Why do we consider? Why do we consider then this is so zero? zero measure sets, that's the function. Yes, function is identical infinity, then this integral is zero. Why? Since what is the integral? What is the integral? Integral of f d mu, it is supremum, supremum of integral of phi d mu for all simple functions which are smaller than f, yes? But simple function by definition, it is finite linear combination of finite functions, okay? So this is zero, this is zero because it is finite number ck, finite linear combination, and here we have mu e k and all of e k and all of them are zero, all of them are zero, okay? So it follows just by definition that this integral is zero. So this is one of motivation. Why do we, why do we use in the theory of measure that one? Please don't mix this with calculus once more. This is actual infinity, not potential. It's not a limit of something, but very concrete value in the set, in the set of extended real numbers. Okay. 
Okay. Now, if both are finite and if our function it is sum of these two, though of course function is integrable if and only if the model is integrable. Of course, they have a different integrals. Integrals, of course, are different, but integrability, we have the fact of integrability. Okay? Now, from here, mm, I don't want to spend time for this Fresnel integral. Uh, I recommend you check yourself that if you take these integrals, then you will have that um, the modulus is divergence. Diverge, uh, modulus, integral of modulus is infinity, so it's not integrable. Okay, now, now we have three minutes and, uh, ah, before, wait a minute, before importantly big dominate convergence theorem, there is another trivial proposition, a simple fact. So this is the last proposition of the type that integral is good as well for new class of functions. We introduced integral for simple function that proved that it's good in the sense of linear, monotone, etc. Then we generalize for bounded functions, for positive functions, and now we can do the same for integrable functions. For integrable functions, uh, we will not prove it since proof is straightforward immediately, we have by definition, but we have to write this explicitly. This is proposition 7 in my enumeration. So, Proposition seven, suppose the two functions are integrable, so positive, negative, finite, infinite, not so important, but integrals exist. Then what do we have? We have that integral is linear, so alpha f plus beta g d mu, it is in alpha, etc. Now we have f less or equal than g almost everywhere. We have integral of f. Maybe let's write almost everywhere in this way. Almost everywhere we have integral of f integral of g. Now, if we have that uh, a, b are disjoint two sets measurable, then we have that integral of f union b, f it is integral of a uh, plus integral of b. And indeed from here, function may be positive, may be negative, we will see that if positive function defines uh, I don't remember what did I write here. If positive function defines some new measure lambda in this way, that integrable function will define some signed measure. Signed measure. Since uh, for signed measure is, uh, that we'll consider with you later, then uh, it can take positive negative values, but uh, the most important sigma additivity. Sigma additivity. Sigma additivity, indeed, we will have uh, from the result of that type. So this is proposition number seven. Uh, indeed, that's enough, yeah? So proof is straightforward. Straightforward. After break, we will prove with you the last theorem today, and indeed in this chapter, but one of the most important theorem in the course, because of numerical, uh, because of a lot of different numerous uh, applications, Lebesgue-dominated convergence theorem. <laughs>